Welcome to Hands-On with Jota. Today we are going to take a look into Nest.js. Um, I was looking into different frameworks out there, and I, it really caught my attention this one. It, it During the last two talks that we have, we talk about Fastify, we talk about Express.js, and this guy, Nest, Nest is working behind the scenes with uh, the option of Express.js or Fastify. So I take a look into it and it says Progressive Node.js framework for building efficient, reliable, and scalable server-side applications. Pumba. And we have here extensible, versatile, and, and progressive. So what calls my attention from these guys and why I'm, 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 I'm trying to take a, a look into them is because, because the following. I'm creating a lot of different APIs. Um, I tried to create them with Express.js at some point. So uh, I also took a look into Fastify. Express.js at some point is a minimalistic option. Fastify comes with some cool features that at some point call my attention, like saying schemas and so on, and validation of some of these schemas. Some of these things really call my attention. But then comes Nest.js, and Nest.js comes with a lot of different cool features. Um, it says here extensible, versatile, and progressive. So let's take a look into it. Okay, library is modular architecture. Okay. So basically, this is going to be working with TypeScript by default. So you are going to be able to, to work with some of the different uh, types there, which is going to be pretty cool if you have many different APIs. You're going to be able to have um, types in between. And that's something I'm looking for. And it says here, you see, you can actually work with Express or Fastify as well. And it comes with some of the cool things that comes from object oriented programming, functional programming, and functional reactive programming. So, <laughs> so let's take a look into some of these concepts, right? So I did the following. First comes first, I just make an installation of the Nest CLI, which is this one. And then I just create a brand new project, I call it example project. And I created all these, all these different things. Um, afterwards, it says, okay, do you want to use Yarn or NPM? I just use NPM for this time. It doesn't, doesn't come to, to any, any particular needs if I'm using one or the other in this case. Um, and then I take a look into what, what's going on here. I just say NPM start and it started here and it went all the way to the hello world. So what comes afterwards is that if I open this guy, um, here is the folder with all the information that we need, right? So this is what we get. And we have here, nest factory that comes from the, from the core, and you're going to be able to see application listen to a certain port. In this case, it's going to be working with the port 3000. And it calls this bootstrap, right? So this is the first step. Afterwards, you have here controller, module, service. And we could be talking about each one of these different parts of this offering from Nest. And it will not it will be a pretty 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 long video, but I'm, I, I would like to I would like to make a little resume of some of the things that I, are, it really matters to me at some point and that I think they are great. And for example, you're going to have here a module, right? And what I was doing with Express at some point, I was trying to make the injections of dependencies with um, with certain dependencies that were, uh, like saying, connection to database and some of these different things. I just created um, this, this connection using a partial application of a function. So I make the connection with the database and then afterwards I execute the function uh, that's going to contain all the references to the database and, and the things that you need for the, for the small microservice that I was working with. But in this case, they are using dependency injection, which is the following. It's just saying, okay, I'm going to have a module that's going to have the dependency injection of a certain controller and it's going to have the dependency injection of a service. And each one of these different things, like the controller and the service, they have their own different um, purposes, right? For example, if you go here to to the controller, this guy, what he's doing is handling the certain routes that you're going to be looking for. 
um, is going to be calling to this dot app service. So basically, our de our dependency injection of our providers here is giving you the chance to say app service, and this app service is going to have the get hello. So this app service is this one. It says get hello, and what it returns from here is going to go as a response to the client. So that's pretty neat. And then you have the test as well, which is pretty nice. Some of these things are pretty much arguable, right? I mean, here for a shortcut, we are using this, this structure. Okay. Anyway, let's keep on going. So you have here chest end to end, up end to end. And you have here prettier. This is pretty nice because uh, pretty, prettier lets you to have um, in a se in the same similar shape all the different code without making uh, introducing bugs with changes that are just fixing just making 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 they look like of the code in a cool way for everybody. So I think prettier is a good stuff. Then you're going to have here some ESLint RC which contains some of the different rules for TypeScript and so on. So here you have the, the TS config that contains all of the different com uh, compiler options. So basically these, these guys are providing this uh, support with TypeScript that is pretty neat. Um, it's using RimGraph for, th for this, that's pretty nice too. So this is this is pretty, pretty cool stuff, basically. I'm just taking a look into some of the different things that they have here in the package JSON of what they are creating with this uh, Nest CLI. Um, okay, but so far so good. And then you have this one, Nest CLI. So this is using schematics. This is something that comes from Angular, if I'm wrong. Uh, you are going to be able to create a certain template, right? And this template is going to be, is going to be provided by schematics, right? Um, just config here the okay cool pretty pretty nice so the very first shape and the very first example from them is going to be just a module that contains with the hello world and says control hello and then it says service and you have the Hello world and service, right? That's pretty much everything that they're offering for the first glance. But they have a lot more than that. They have a lot of different options out there. For example, you have here um, you have controllers that they actually explain here how they are working with the routing. And for example, here um, there are some things that are going to be level specific. For example, some things are going to be in regards to working with Express and some of them are going to be probably in regard to uh, Fastify. Then you have the providers here, um, which allows you to have this uh, particular service that we just saw. We have the concept of modes. So basically you have with the modes, you have also something called like import and export. You can import other modes as well that contains their own controllers and so on. So itself, I, I think this is, uh, this is pretty, pretty nice. You have guards. So you're going to have different kind of um, requests from the client side to, to a certain controller and then this controller is going to handle the route but it's going to be also able to to verify that information that's being requested is properly done. And then you have a lot of other things here like saying, okay, microservices support. So this is, this is getting pretty huge already. Basically here you have all the supports for making the control of different microservices in your system. Uh, I'm pretty curious about working with these microservices right now because if I'm going to be doing some things, for example, with, um, with Docker containers that I'm analyzing right now in the, some of the different videos that you see, uh, this, this is going to be handling some of the different communication with, with in between the different services. Um, and it, there is even more than this. You can actually use, for example, uh, other guys that are not in this list and they're going to be also supported. So that's pretty nice. I saw the implementation of these guys and basically it's also making the, 
the injection of the different services when you create the microservices like this, right? And um, when you create so, you're going to be able to, to define um, the transport layer the way that you're going to be communicating with with, um, with this uh, microservice and a lot of different options. I think this it is pretty, 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 pretty nice. But we're not going to go into further details. Basically, if you have here microservices, you're going to have interaction with different web sockets, with the web sockets, with GraphQL uh, techniques, and also comes with something that's pretty nice, which is uh, like receipts. I, I really enjoy that because of the following, <laughs> this one. For example, CQRS. If you want to work with CQRS, just because of reasons, right? It's just because by some reason you think that it's going to be more easy for you to maintain services that are going to be working with certain commands, and then you want to shape them all in the same way, then you can actually call this CQRS. Um, you can, if I'm not wrong, I think there is a schematic for making the the run of this uh, receipt. And then it's going to provide you with a very simple example of what is going to be um, what is going to be a CQRS, right? Um, that's pretty neat because of the volume. What I was doing with Express at some point, it was alright, but these guys they are doing what I was doing much better than me, and they are actually they are they are doing all these dependency injections with the whole community behind the scenes that actually. Uh, makes very good proposals and, and has a lot of workforce already done and I think that I would really like to, to take a look deeper into these guys because you also provide uh, all, all of this uh, so I are a lot of things out of the box right I'm doing some things with mongoose and going and doing some things with SQLize so basically they are shaping the way of doing things in Node.js and that's pretty nice because of the following in many cases when you go to when you go from one work to another work, some people is working in a different way, and that's okay too. But also, it is pretty nice if you have something like um like a bit more of a, a at first glance. Okay, this guy is using guard, and instead of saying okay, this guy is using happy shades and the other one is using schemas and the other one is using something else and some some other framework, right? So basically, these guys are showing some of these different concepts together and shaping the Node.js applications in a same same way, and uh, it's opinionated way, right? Same same ideas, and that, that's that's going to give you the shape of all the different services and things that you need in the same shape. So, as you see, the offering is huge here. My other question is going to be the following. I mean, I'm 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 pretty curious about the following. How how much do you buy from all of this? I mean, let's suppose that you want to get some of these different things into into a Docker container. So if you want to put some of these different things into a Docker container, how big or small is going to be that image from the Docker container? If I try to get some of these different things from here. So that's going to be a very, very interesting question if I try to create a production-ready image with um, with Nest.js. And that's going to be my next goal at some point. I would really like to take a look into that. So yeah, so for today of today, it's just a very simple example. Just if you want to take a look into, into, into this guy in more detail, I'm going to be probably creating different um, different videos about this because this is not for only one video of course and also there is here from the from the um, creator itself uh, I think there is also a video that's at the beginning of everything here if I'm wrong here is a video on the conference that this guy is actually presenting this is, this is the creator of, of, of uh, this framework and I as far as I saw he's having a lot of uh, responses there and I, I see that he's He's providing a lot of commitment, we can say, to to the framework itself. So uh, we can we, we can see that there is a there is a very good progress in regards to this one. Uh, and later on, we are going to be talking in regards to each one of these different guys to know which is the offering for each one of them. Because yes, it's it's, it's pretty nice everything that's going on here. So 
I, I think that for today is good enough. Later we are going to take a look into smaller pieces of this because we just saw in regards to controllers, we just saw the very basics of controllers, the very basics of providers, our very first module that comes with this Hello World. Um, we are going to take a look into some other things from here like guards and, and some of these different things here, right? So I hope that you liked the video of today. If you did so, just uh, give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, it's, it's, it's pretty nice to do, to do these kind of different kind of videos. Um, have a good one. Bye-bye.